another episode of The Idol, but this time we get torture. Awesome. Another week, another episode of The Idol. This is episode four, Stars Belong to Everybody. How poignant of a title. So here we go. We have yet another episode. And what I found out was something a little bit interesting. I was under the impression that when HBO announced The Idol, it was going to be six episodes. And it looks like there aren't going to be six episodes. There's just going to be five. The last episode, I believe, is called Jocelyn Forever. And this seems to be just announced. This was not something that... Uh, that anybody was expecting. Everybody was saying things like, oh no, this is, there's there's gonna be more episodes, but no, the finale will be next Sunday, called Jocelyn Forever. Uh, they said it, Sam Levinson, who took over the original show, said that it should end with five, I guess, instead of four, or instead of six, even though they quoted everybody. And uh, there's an inside source that says that this was never meant to be a long-running show. It was always a limited series. Well, all right then. I guess people have been misreporting things because uh, they've already been... Like, nobody seems to understand what's going on with this show, right? But we're having fun with it. We're, 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 there's only so much cringe to go around, and, and it's the summertime, and we could use more cringe. So let's talk a little bit about this episode. We'll break it down find out what in the world was this episode about what was going on there are things i liked about it and things i didn't like mostly didn't like about uh but there are a couple shining stars but one thing that came to my mind i when i was watching this i was like hmm these stories seem kind this show seems kind of like either somebody had this lived experience or they're taking it for someone else and i started to think about it and i thought about a story that Dave, Charlie Murphy and Dave Chappelle told about Rick James. You may know Rick James from such hits as Super Freak. Well, Rick James was a big time partier and cocaine is a hell of a drug. So there are stories about Rick James. I'm pretty sure he went to jail because him and his girlfriend kidnapped and tortured a woman. So, gonna say maybe that's where they got the the uh, the idea for this. Yeah, he he they got five years straight. Um, wait, no, him and his girlfriend were arrested on charges for holding a 24 year old hostage for six days, tying her up, forcing her to perform acts, burning her with stuff. I wonder if they electrocuted her. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's pretty bad. He served five years, five year sentence. So, I wonder, I wonder, this seems kind of familiar. So, either way, that's okay. Uh, it's just, it's nothing new. That that happened back in the 70s, right? So, I'm going to say, actually, it was 92. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, either way, th this is where I believe the inspiration for these stories are. But let's get in the episode. Let's talk about it. It opens on a party, and there's maids shoveling cocaine back in bags pulling off big giant dildos off the wall i mean it's mayhem it's crazy and tedros was lording over all of it as he has officially moved in his entire party posse into this place and um yeah it's pretty weird but what we do get is what i think are the two best actors in the show because you have um, you have her managers, played by D uh, Divine Joy Randolph and Hank Azaria, who I think are the best actors in the show. In fact, they make The Weeknd, and they make uh, Lily Rose Depp, who's at this point just a sex doll. She's not even an actress. And they make it seem like, you know, they're really acting in this. I, I really do enjoy them. So they have a whole rundown of, of they finally figure out who this guy is, who Tedros is. They go through his rap sheet full of violence, what his real name is, instead of Tedros Tedros. And they start, he, they decide on a plan, half of a plan, where uh, Destiny would go into the house and observe everything goes, goes on. And she's starting to decipher 
what this really looks like. She meets one of the cult members, uh, the, the, the young piano playing girl who's running around naked and apparently she's 17, not 18, and she was homeless on the street when Tedro saved her life. And then um, you also get the introduction of, they actually get Mike Dean, the actual producer, coming in just smoking bongs all day. Like, is this who you really... He, I don't understand, but he has like some priceless reactions in this. He doesn't talk at all, really. He might have like two words, but he does... It's all kind of ridiculous. And Joss is laying down vocal tracks, and she has great... Lyric, the lyrics are just like what? She's like, I like, I like not having to make decisions for myself because I trust you. That's great. And then you know, Tedros is like, you need to get a better vocal reaction. Well, he just decides to start, you know, finger blasting her in the, like this. What is going on? Why are these songs? None of this makes any sense. All of it is crazy. But I do like the part where, um. The Susanna Sun girl, who seems clearly talented, she's you know talking to Destiny, and is it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, you also find that um, what's her name, uh, the the girl from Black Pink, has completely taken over Joss's whole life, and she's gonna get the single. the The record label owns the single, number one sinner or whatever it's called. And Jenny's going to perform it. And she's already shot the video. They want to sign her to a big deal. Put her out there. And that'll come into play a little bit later in the episode. Um, For some reason. And I don't really understand. I didn't understand this part. Maybe somebody can give me some clarity on this. If you understood it better. Um, but Xander who is. Uh, he's Joss's creative director. I guess, and he basically gets freaked out. You know, Tedro sneaks up on him and starts like, I, I don't know what's going on, but he's saying that why did the guy stop singing? He's like, oh, I tore my vocal cords. Well, then they he gets his goons to abduct Xander, and then they're going to torture Xander to learn the truth, and apparently Jocelyn's abusive mother made him sign a contract to not sing professionally, and he's saying, th then he's yelling at Xander that Jocelyn's worse. And I, I don't really understand what is going on. And it like none of that really came through as clear other than control and torture. So they're literally torturing him. And it's super duper weird. I don't really get what was going on there. But either way... Um, Destiny's like, oh, tell me a little bit about Tedros's, uh, you know, what what do you know about Tedros? And she gives him the whole, oh, he was just defending himself. And, but, you know, <laughs> Destiny's like, mm hmm. <laughs> uh, that's where you find, yeah. And then you find out that Diane is, is going to get signed. And what is also weird, too, uh, oh, Chloe, Chloe spills the beans. On the fact that Tedros told Diane to bring Joss to the club. And that Diane's still in love with him or whatever. Like, nobody has figured out that she's a plant. And, again, what are Ted Tedros's machinations here? Like, is he some... They're trying to play him off like he's some sort of jilted, like, jealous genius. But, instead, I just I just don't get what he's doing or what's going on. It's It's all very... Very strange. Then, apparently, Joss is like, well, I'm pissed that you took my world-class center and the, the single that she hated and we're just moaning over. <laughs> then she invites her her extremely ugly... Uh, I think he's ugly. I could be wrong. Her tall, ugly boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. And then they the, the strangest thing in the entire show is Tedros... Trying to fight uh, Rob, and it's like, woo, 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 woo. And then Joss is like, well, it's just, it's crazy. The stuff that he yells at, I mean, I don't even understand. It's like the weekend was like, I'm just going to drop the F slur, and I don't care. I'm like, what? And then Jocelyn, it just like, she just can't. 
can't control herself. He's trying to have a conversation with her, and she's like, I'm going to bang the living bejesus out of you. <laughs> it's in God's hands now. Uh, and then... As Rob is leaving, Xander approaches him with a girl because Zan they don't trust Xander for some reason because he betrayed Joss. Do they tell us how he betrayed Joss? I have no idea other than maybe they're talking about like him not helping her when her mom was beating her or something. But then Tedros is beating her. So what's the difference? As long as someone's beating Joss, everything's going to be all right. So then... Um, this girl starts straddling the the rob and i'm sure it's going to be used as ammunition but who i don't even know it does none of it none of it makes sense and apparently just just so you know rob's driver was sitting outside of the house the whole time so he's like goes upstairs nails joss it does all the drinking got gets into a kung fu fight nails joss and then you, you'd think it all took place in five minutes because it did in the show but the the who whatever i don't there's no like internal consistency to this thing but we live through it <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get there we're gonna get to the finale did you are you ready for the finale are you strapped in do you feel like this went anywhere do you feel like we're ready for a finale? Like, what's gonna... Is she just gonna die of an overdose? Is Tedros gonna shoot somebody? Why didn't Tedros shoot somebody? I mean, if that actor was laying wood to my number one prize, the person I'm living with, and my girlfriend, I'm pretty sure Tedros, the actor, the character, would have pulled out a gun and capped that guy. So I don't really know what's going on. And then he's like crying for some reason because he's so upset. It's like, what? What? I feel like there's a lot of the show missing or just things that are ne we're never going to get answers for. But what did you think? Did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Are you excited for the finale? I mean, I can hardly wait. I wanted two more of these crazy episodes. I'm only getting one. I feel like the jilted lover now. Let me know what you think. Love to hear from you. Catch our full-length audio podcast. We're on Instagram, all those great places and more. DM us. We have giveaways, all sorts of fun stuff. You can come hang out with us Friday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Love to hear from you. Love to see you. But I am on to the next one. <laughs>